This episode of What the Tech is brought to you by Braintree Payments. Mobile app development can be complex, but integrating your payments no longer has to be. With Braintree, your business can accept nearly every type of payment from any device with just one integration. Learn more at braintreepayments.com slash whatthetech. And by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to harrys.com. And just in time for Father's Day, get $5 off the limited edition Father's Day set by entering the code WHATTHETECH when you check out. Hey, everybody. Welcome to What the Tech. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by Mr. Paul Therod. How you doing, Paul? Pretty good. You are uh, You're in the proper frame rate. You're in 30 frames a second. I figure if I just rebuild my computer every weekend, we'll be all set for the yeah. rest of the time. I mean, I guess that's what we're going to do. So you're still on the Nook right now. Yep. I'm, I really like the Nook. I just, I really want to keep using it. Like, I really Do you I really think maybe like it's, it. like a, it's like a, like a software that you're installing at one point and that's doing this? No, like I still think it's the Intel drivers. You think it's yeah. just no, it is a possibility. Yeah. Of course it is. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't have anything plugged into this thing right now, literally. It's like I have one dongle for the mouse and keyboard. I've got the camera, of course, the web camera. And then I have a USB interface for the, um, whatever that thing's called, you know, for the microphone, basically. Um, and that's it. Yeah. You know? And I plug in a phone to the front from time to time to, you know, offload photos or screenshots or whatever. That's it. That's what that's what does it. <laughs> you can't. Come on. I mean, I just I literally right now it it must have four free USB ports on it. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like I don't understand. Oh well. Anyway. Anyway. Well, you look wonderful today. Uh you were in New <laughs> you York. You look uh, pixelated and blurry. Oh, uh, thank you. That's exactly how I'm supposed to look cuz uh, we're having we're having some you. driver issues also. Yeah. It, it, it's actually exactly how you saw me on Thursday when we were both stumbling to Penn Station. Uh yep. that I got on the wrong train. That's that's for the post show. I got on a train straight to Great Neck Long Island that that totally passed Bayside. Just kept going and going and going. And I said, "Oh crap." Uh, we have a lot to talk about. I do want to. I do want to retouch last week's conversation that we had. Um, it, it's this Windows 10 stuff is very controversial, and we we kind of spoke about it, you know, when we were hanging out. And I totally get both sides of the argument. I kind of want to touch on that towards the end of the show because I I feel like if we start now, it's going to totally totally uh, dominate the entire thing. So we <laughs> yep. won't do that now, right? I mean, I'm sure you got a lot of the emails. Sure. So let's um, <laughs> let's hold off on doing that. Let's hold right. off. And that's, not what we're gonna do. that's what we're gonna do. Let's hold off on that. But and uh, <laughs> let's talk about our sponsor before we go heavy into this conversation. And that's Braintree, guys. If you are an app developer, app developer, if you have a business and you're planning on accepting mobile payments, this is a major, major pain in the butt uh, when trying to cover all your grounds. Meaning. You may want to accept PayPal, uh, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Android Pay, whatever other payment method, all the different type of currencies, every major credit card. It becomes extremely difficult to manage. And every time that there's a new platform that you plan on accepting, guess what? You got to hire somebody to come in there, add a whole bunch of new stuff, take old stuff out. It, it's, it's really, really difficult. But with Braintree... It's a one-stop solution. Braintree is a full-stack payment platform that makes it easily adaptable to whatever the future holds, regardless if it's you know pounds, Apple Pay, or the next Bitcoin. Uh, I have a couple friends that have actually switched over to Braintree. They've they've dropped the other the other company that they were using. I don't want to mention them, but they dropped them and they got with Braintree because they're also a pay PayPal company. It's extremely secure. They go based on a talk token authentication system. So meaning the vendor's never getting the credit card information. There's a there's a vulnerability on the vendor side. You're not affected by it. Uh, the other thing is no late nights for your developer, no complicated uh, you know, moments where you gotta add stuff and remove stuff. It's literally a couple lines of code. And I know we have a bunch of developers in our chat right now and that are watching right now. So you know how difficult this could be when you're trying to fix something that's broken. 
you go to braintreepayments.com slash what the tech you get more information there on everything that they're doing over there uh their sdks in many languages braintree code supports android ios and javascript clients they're great guys great code uh and they've been with us for a while and i know a lot of you have been using it and keep sending me those messages uh, if you've if you've implement the brain tree because you know what i do i send it to them and they love to hear what you like and what you don't like so send me send me um you know if you're implementing them braintreepayments.com slash what the tech get more information there and let them know we sent you i want to thank braintree for supporting the gfq network and of course for supporting what the tech so paul yes sir uh can we talk about the xbox a little bit let's do that a lot of rumors yep a lot of stuff happening and you know what brad's a big time troublemaker <laughs> actually brad blew it um you know he mentioned all this stuff on the podcast on friday got uh, ripped off by every major news publication I know. on earth i saw and it. never wrote his own article about it i know i <laughs> saw like, i saw that i saw it get picked up everywhere uh, guys if you go to therat.com it's last week's uh podcast sam's that brad, report, yeah. brad did sam's report go check it out because he went through a lot of a uh, lot of uh, news and rumors and and you could you could I don't want to spoil it for you, but I really highly recommend that you listen to it. But it is very interesting because this, some of the things that he covered are some of the ideas that many of us have spoken about that Microsoft should be doing. And some things, it's a little wonky. So what can you guide us through? Uh, let's blame this all on Brad. So if somebody's listening that doesn't yeah. like what you're saying right now, it's all Brad's fault. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, well, So I, I, none of this is firsthand information for me. Yeah. Um, I think Brad's got some good sources and it's not 100% clear. You know what Microsoft is going to announce. I think it's next week at um, E three. E three, but um, so I can't independently corroborate any of this stuff. So I, this is from Brad. I I, I, I normally wouldn't <laughs> discuss this kind of thing, but it's Brad, and you know he writes to the site, and sure. I trust his sources and so forth. So according to Brad, um, Microsoft uh, could announce some combination of the following. So. Uh, two so-called streamer or streaming devices, um, one of which is very similar to, from a form factor perspective, to a Chromecast. One of which is more like a small uh, kind of set-top box, like a Roku type device. Okay. Um, it's not clear if by streamers it literally means uh, video streamers or video streamers plus game streaming. Remember, one of the features of Xbox One is that you can broadcast games to um, throughout your house to a, like to a Windows 10 device. And so maybe, and there were rumors now that that will even work on Windows 10 Mobile, which is kind of like um, an embedded IoT type device. And if that were the case, obviously these devices could do that. So I could have like an Xbox One in my office, sit out there with a controller with a little Chromecast looking thing and play the game on the big TV. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. So, but the, the tiny <laughs> one will be like a Chromecast. So if we're, if I were to guess... The tiny one mm -hmm. would be just before, you know, uh, media consumption and and just web browsing and stuff like that. Just like well, a Chromecast, I, exactly what you I do. I literally don't know. It could okay. literally stream. Why couldn't it stream or games? It like or, a, I guess it could, yeah. Game streaming really is just a, kind of a mirror cast function. So yeah. I don't think it really requires a lot on the front end PC. Uh, but it wouldn't have but, independent apps and things like that. It would just be like a mirror cast. Yeah, I okay. would think so. Yeah, one, one of the, I mean, I'm just since I I know a little bit about some related things. I mean, I I suppose we could speculate that since Microsoft is known to be enhancing Miracast with two way functionality, meaning that the Miracast screen can interact with the content that's being beamed to it uh, and impact the original device back wherever it might be. It's possible that this technology is based on or related to that. You know, okay, so that's just just a thought. Um, he talked about a uh, a cost reduced version of the current console, the Xbox One, right? Which and makes sense. Good, totally. Yeah. Um, it makes sense on two levels. So on the one hand, you've got Microsoft where they are today with the Xbox One, which is a good console. Um, it, obviously, there are some inherent design issues that prevent it from running games at 1080p, for example. This isn't going to solve that. Uh, it's a big, big machine. That's a problem for a lot of people with their living room. Uh, it generates a lot of heat. You can't, you know, pack it into a stereo cabinet or whatever. Um, yeah. And I've had those. Oh, by the way, so I, I speaking of which, I think I complained about the Xbox One power supply last week. Yeah, to me personally, when we were hanging out. Oh, okay. I didn't do this on the show. No, no, no. We, I mean, bring it up. Yeah. I, I, no, we'll we'll it go up. into that later. Okay. Um, so 
this is what they always do. So if you look back on the Xbox 360, X number of years in, they made an Xbox 360 S. I think there was a third, well, I know there was a third version, but I think the third version might have been called the E. Uh, and I don't remember, I don't, maybe just more efficient or something. The S, I think, was for slim. Okay. And, you know, you, you technology improves. You can make uh, things cheaper. You can make them smaller. You can have them generate less heat because they're smaller. Um, you can make a new case. It doesn't have to be humongous, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that thing should be announced uh, next week, and it should come out this holiday season. But of, essentially, you know, it's it's the Xbox. It's not... It's not... It's it is not literally a replacement for the current Xbox. Just a yeah. smaller, more efficient version of the Xbox. It's it's not... Mm -hmm. You're not losing quality. It's not a cheaper You're not box. gaining anything you're either. You're not gaining anything either. Potentially being smaller and, yeah. you know, less expensive. Um, the the other... I, I said there were two things that this accomplishes. One is th that obvious thing, which we do every console generation, you know, make it more efficient. Um, the other one is that uh, sometime in the past 30 days or so, Microsoft actually canceled production of the Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. And they did that based on a number of factors. I mean, they kept it in the market for a long time, uh, in part, I think, because the Xbox One didn't take off as quickly as they had hoped, but also in part because it was, you know, still selling. And so uh, why would you get rid of something that's still working? This game's being made for it every year, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I think the sales had fallen off enough that they decided, okay, maybe it's time to get rid of this. And plus, they know from speaking to all the game publishers when you talk to the Activisions, the Electronic Arts, the whoever's of the world, and they say, okay, this is what we're releasing this year, and these are the platforms we're supporting, this was the year where they were like, look, we're not doing 360. It doesn't, yeah. the, the audience size doesn't justify it anymore. The, you know, or not so much the size, but their desire to buy new games is not that great, or it's just more difficult to support new games on these older consoles as well, et cetera, et cetera. So um, they canceled it. And, but what that means is there's a hole at the low end yeah. If you look at the price of an Xbox 360, or at least what it was before they were sold out, about 150 bucks. That's $200 cheaper than the cheapest Xbox One right now. Yeah. So they're not going to get the Xbox One down to 150, but if they can cost reduce that thing down to say maybe 250, they get into this area of the market which is currently not being served by the current console. And so that's a good idea. So, and if I were to take an intelligent guess, mm -hmm. for the high end, are we looking at a a new Xbox. Yeah, so that's the fourth thing that uh, Brad mentioned. So this isn't something that's going to come out this holiday season, I don't believe. I don't know if they're announcing it next week. Uh, I, I would imagine they would. Um, like Sony, Microsoft is allegedly going to make a higher-end version of its console. And so the Sony version, we kind of think of it as the PS4.5. <laughs> the one the, and a half, the Xbox one yeah, and a half. Yeah, the PS4K, whatever. So I don't know what we're going to call this thing. Um <laughs> I guess if you were being sarcastic, like I would be normally, you could call it the Xbox One HD, <laughs> you know, or whatever, because, <laughs> you know, it technically doesn't do full HD, but it doesn't matter. The point is uh, to achieve two things. One is to uh, reach a, fu like, not functional, but a technical parity, if not a technical superiority to the PlayStation, which is something they really f did not do with this current gen. And I, I look, I spend, I I spent a lot of time in Call of Duty games in particular, but let's just say the Xbox One generally every day. Um, I've played certain games side by side on both consoles, and I have to say I don't really notice a difference. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty equal. I I, yeah. yeah they're, technically, they're not, right? And I guess the only thing I could say to this is that for a single-player experience where you can really kind of hand control frame rates and things because you understand what's possible in an environment, it's easier to achieve higher frame rates at higher resolutions. But when you play multiplayer games, you tend to strip things back. The graphics aren't quite as good. The frame rate goes up because it's important, but the resolution goes down because the important thing is that speed and the, and the ability to, you know, no matter how many things are moving in front of you, that it always kind of works. Yeah. So, you know, modern shooters like the Call of Duty Black Ops 3, which I play primarily the new Doom game, um, look beautiful um, in multiplayer. I suppose they're not technically as good looking as these games are in single player. But when I look at a game like Black Ops 3, side by side, PlayStation 4 to PlayStation, I'm sorry, to Xbox One, I, I noticed no difference. Yeah. But the fact remains, every single game come, times a game comes out that's on both consoles, they'll do these tests and they'll say, oh, the PS4 version is 1080p, the Xbox One version is 960p or whatever the resolution is. And it's this thing that is nagging at Xbox. And as 
the PlayStation kind of widens its lead, it's it's like this problem. So sure. one major goal is uh, twenty minutes later. One, sorry, no, no, go no, slow. please talk about this because um, this is people want to hear this. <laughs> twenty minutes later, um, uh, one of the major goals I think of this thing should be to again reach technical parity, if not be technically superior to the PS four point five or whatever they're calling that yeah. thing. Um, and it achieves that, or it should achieve that. But the, from the perspective of people using the console, it should do, let's say, three things. Um, one is 4K video, right? That the, uh, both Sony and Microsoft have content stores. They can sell or rent 4K video. It would be incredible to have a, an Xbox console that matched yeah. you know, the best teams. Uh, and, and if you've ever seen 4K video, I'm sure you have. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. Sellers. It's beautiful, yeah. Yeah. Um, the second one would be improved games, right? And, and typically improved games, meaning higher frame rates and higher resolutions. And a dual development model where you're, you as the developer are only shipping one game, Call of Duty, you know, whatever the next one's called, uh, Infinity Warfare or whatever it was. And it will work fine on either version of the Xbox One. And so if you have the original console, if you have the new cost-reduced console, or you have the 4K version, whatever it's called, the, game, the same game works on all three, but yeah. when you play it on the higher end console, you get the enhanced graphics resolution and, and you know, okay. if there so, are other special yeah. features of the console. Yeah. So that's never been done before on, on consoles effectively. We should talk about that topic in depth in a moment, but yeah. I just want to get to the I'm just trying to grasp panel. it if, if what is that the equivalent of, I guess that's the equivalent of a PC, you know? Yes. Yep. Well, let's, let's talk about that, but yeah. let me, before we do, let me just kind of close the loop on the the benefits. Um, the last one is VR. And uh, Sony, we know, is doing PlayStation VR. We're very interested in Sony <laughs> PlayStation VR because to date, VR to do like full-blown VR, I don't mean like little, you know, smartphone VR, but like full-blown VR, requires a very expensive hardware apparatus, right? A $700-ish Oculus Rift slash HTC Vive, whatever it is. Paired with a fifteen hundred dollar or more computer, yeah. So you have it over a two thousand dollar investment right there. Yeah. yeah. So a Sony PlayStation Four costs about three hundred fifty dollars or four hundred bucks, wherever that falls. Uh, the VR device has got to be, I don't know if they announced it, but let's say a couple hundred dollars. That's a very low cost, high quality VR solution if it works. Um, it may work better or only work on the high end PlayStation console. We don't know anything about yet. Um, I think in Microsoft's case, it will almost certainly only work on the high-end console. But again, I don't know anything about it personally. Yeah. Um, and so this thing would not ship this year. This is for next year. When, when uh, is Sony's uh, shipping? It's this year. Yeah. Well, we don't know. So the Sony VR thing is shipping this year. The Sony 4K console, I think we assume it's shipping this year. But I don't know that we actually know I, that. I would assume it would. The, you know what the other question I had was? And someone in the chat room right yep. now, actually, if you're watching... Yeah, go to jfklive.tv. You could watch and, and join the chat there. Is uh, the Xbox the the you know the 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 Xbox One and a Half going to support UHD 4K Blu-rays? I don't know, but it would make sense that it would, right? It would make I sense mean, that 4K, it should. Yeah, 4K video should include 4K video, yeah, yeah. Uh, Blu-ray. It, it's so very by the way, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> this you know, an interesting coincidence. Um, one week ahead of E3 and the expected slim version of the Xbox One. Uh, Microsoft has just lowered the price of the existing Xbox One to three hundred dollars, <laughs> so right. the price just went down by another fifty bucks. Um, have we have we had they discussed form factor for this? That's the higher end Xbox. Well, no, I, I haven't heard anything about. Would the you? Form I mean, if you were to guess, would you say it would have the same form factor as the Xbox? It would it'd be no. a slim form factor. Oh no! no. In it, fact, the, the, my biggest dis well, <laughs> one of my disappointments with the existing Xbox One console is the form factor. It's this gigantic box. Big. As a separate gigantic power supply, despite its heft, it doesn't have any kind of slide out expansion capabilities for replacing the internal hard drive or adding an internal hard drive. There's all this space in there. It'd be incredible to be able to slide in like an SSD and just have it work instead of having to plug in USB uh, storage. I mean, stupid. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's a heating issue? They needed to add the space for heating or? Yeah. So uh, remember just... when. <laughs> Remember the Xbox 360 had the blue screen or the red screen of death uh, issue. Uh, right? I'm the, the only red. guy that never got it. <laughs> okay, well, I by the way, I think I got it about eight not or eight, eight or nine times. Eight I don't times anymore. Eight times across multiple consoles. Yeah. Um, this thing triggered a one billion dollar. We can't say warranty recall, but it was basically a warranty recall where they extended everyone's warranties out to infinity, replaced these things without question, 
it was a huge, huge problem. And I've told you the story about when I went and saw the Xbox 360 six month ish before it came out, right after they announced the 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 way it would look in the development workstations with those gigantic Mac Power Mac yeah. um, the power you know, G5s. Pieces. Yeah. And I said, I said, how are we gonna squeeze this into that tiny box? And they said, Oh, we get guys that are working on that. And they clearly never figured it out, right? Yeah. It wasn't until the technology they again cost reduced, made it more efficient. It went down to the smaller unit. Um, they were able to get that working. So um, the Xbox One did not have this problem, right? So for whatever problems we can complain about with the Xbox One, the one thing we have to say is actually this thing's been super reliable, right? I mean, I'm sure some people might have fan noise, you know, because they're plastic fans. Or some people have had drive noise on either optical or hard drive. Uh, I've had a power uh, supply issue where it makes kind of a like a ro 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 kind of a sound, which I don't like. Um, but as far as like rampant reliability issues, yeah, I mean, the Xbox 360 was the least reliable consumer electronics product ever released in history. How much it money did they a lose disaster. on it? You, a you, billion. It was a billion dollars. A billion dollars. Yeah, that they that they publicly said. put aside. So it's a billion dollars that problem. they that they could have said, gloated and said, "Wow, look, we made." This much off this Xbox. It would have been a highly successful device if it wasn't for that billion dollar recall. You know, um, <laughs> it's a billion funny, dollar uh, problem. Well, uh, I noticed with Microsoft, because I primarily write about Microsoft, that the, this company, but I think this is true of a lot of companies, they, they react to things, right? And so when you have a problem like that with the Xbox 360, when it comes time to do the next one, you make sure that doesn't happen, right? So you kind of react to that problem. But the yeah. problem is when they do that, they they put aside some of the things that I think made the Xbox 360 really special. And uh, easy expansion of internal storage was one of those things. And they did a really good job on that with the 360, and they blew it with the Xbox One. So 35 minutes ago or so, you asked me about form factor. I, I don't think the slim version or the 4K version will in any way match this hunking tank-like box. Yeah. So, I, so why they'll would both be thinner than what we have today. I would hope so. Yeah. yeah I would hope it's so. interesting because it's gigantic, but yet they don't allow you to change anything. We were talking about how there are people that are swapping out those hard drives. You know, the first thing I oh, would yeah, do yeah. if I got, listen, I get it. You know, you void your warranty. warranty. It's out of warranty. Town, yeah. Get it. But I would. I'm thinking I, about doing it myself. Yeah, yeah. So I would actually just get an SSD, get a 500 gig SSD, slap that thing in there, and make it into you know it's essentially the elite version, right? Because the elite is the only one that comes with the SSD. I could be wrong. Um, I, I think the elite one is actually a, is that a hybrid drive or an actual? Because it can't be a one terabyte SSD, can it? I bet it's a hybrid. It's drive. a hybrid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a hybrid. Drive. Yeah, yeah. See, what I would want is a full SSD or multiple SSDs, right? I mean, I don't understand. Like uh, adding external drive. I, the last thing I want to do is add something else that I can hear that has its own power supply. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I, what, who wants that? So anyway, all right. So I think we should discuss the thing that is driving hardcore video game fans batshit about this idea because they went batshit about it for the PlayStation and now they're doing it for the Xbox One, which okay. is this. In no time in history has a video game console maker revved the console and improved the hardware, thus creating a market where there are two different types of devices that have different capabilities, right? Right. And that you could potentially make games that would look awesome on the new one and wouldn't look as good on the old one. And so what they're saying is the point of a console is that you have this known platform that is in the market. These days it's been eight years, you know, typically. It doesn't change. But the way that things get better over time typically is that as the developers learn the nuances of the system over time, right? Yeah. They can make better looking games and so forth. They take better advantage of whatever inherent capabilities that the console has. And my response to that thinking is simple and it is bullshit. That's <laughs> bullshit. That's bullshit. So just because things have been a certain way for X number of years doesn't mean they should continue being the same way. This proposed system doesn't hurt anybody. If you were an early adopter, if you were someone who just bought an Xbox One at any time, including this week, the existence of a higher-end version that will make new games only look better on 4K TVs only in no way harms your experience. Yeah. It does. 
It doesn't make you a second class citizen. <laughs> it you know doesn't ruin anything. Microsoft will do this right. Remember, one of the one of the goals of the Xbox One platform now is so that all of these games are going to be universal Windows platform games. And one of the benefits of that platform, because Microsoft has already done this hard work on the PC slash tablet slash phone side especially, yeah. scalability, scalability of experience. That if you run an app on a tiny phone screen, it looks whatever it looks like. If you run that exact same app on a tablet in, in uh, landscape mode, it stretches out and intelligently fills the screen. If you run it full screen on a gigantic 32-inch display like I have here on my PC, it will do that again. And scaling a game between, let's say, two resolutions is not difficult. And you, you mentioned PC games. Anyone who's played PC games know that you can walk into – you, you go into a, a PC game and you, you set – it, you can have the game set the resolution based on what it thinks your PC can do. You can screw around with all these stupid features about, you know, particle, yeah, <laughs> blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, yeah. whatever it is. You know, Alias, anti-aliasing and, and texturing. All, all yeah. kinds of stuff. Um, now, I, I, think, I do think that one of the beauties of, the, of a console, of any console, is that you, that you aren't doing that stuff. Yeah. And that from a hardcore gaming perspective, that's what kind of stinks about consoles. But I, I really think that you can take the reliability and – kind of the known quantity of a console and just it's not it, this isn't the same as going from the original Xbox to the 360 which was a platform change right Intel Celeron to PowerPC completely different architectures and it's also not like going from the 360 to the Xbox one PowerPC to I think AMD based you know x86 essentially um, this is going from the same architecture to the same, it's it's just an upgrade it's it's a better version of what's already there all the existing games will play and look exactly the same, play the same on the new console. The new games that are written to both will probably just look better on the new one. That will be it. They'll, it will, they'll still, they will, Microsoft can ensure, can require that EA or Activision or whoever is making games, makes games that work on both. They can, in fact, require this. And I think they will. I think that's going to be the plan. Okay, so I have a question. Yeah. The, the the reason why people are going up in arms is that they feel maybe that they are getting robbed out of this that mm -hmm. they're they're not going to get the experience that well, what is yeah, it okay. exactly you know like I don't, why? okay it's tradition this is the thing we talk about this yeah why in the world of it are people who enter a, a job market where you know everything's going to change why do they 20 years into their career start freaking out when everything changes why is it okay that mobile apps update themselves all the time, but when Windows 10 updates itself, people freak out. Why do people think nothing of buying a smartphone every two years, but they spend half as much on a video game console and they expect that thing to last eight years? Hmm. Like, wh why? Now, granted, I mean, wireless carriers have hidden the true cost of smartphones from consumers, and so... Um, someone who's paying 20 or 40 or whatever dollars it is yeah. per month um, on a phone would look at a you know a 350 or back in the day a $500 Xbox One and say, wait a minute, that's a lot of money. And yeah, I mean, it, it, th these things are bought on different schedules or plans or whatever. That's yeah. fair. I mean, I have no information about this, but there's no reason Microsoft couldn't give you one of these things on a subscription or I guess we'd call it a lease. Well, you know, that, that's what we were discussing uh, uh, on Thursday when we were having a couple yeah. of drinks where I, when, when you mentioned, you know, we'll have like the regular Xbox and then this will be the more expensive Xbox possibly. Um, yep. it, uh, it's if Microsoft comes up with a subsidized program like a cell phone, mm -hmm. like you said, like you mentioned, where. You know, you get Xbox Live with it. You get all this stuff with it. You know, it's just a higher package of the Xbox Live, a higher version of your of your monthly fee anywhere, yearly fee. Uh, mm -hmm. Could they not entice people to sign up for something like this? Um, you know, it's like the leasing of computers they, mentality. It, it, it's been sure. attempted. And remember, that was a big fear that they were going to do that with Windows for the longest time where, you know, they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. So, I, Mike, I, look, I, on the one hand, Microsoft certainly understands and prefers that kind of income where it's regular, it's monthly, they, it's, it's predictable, right? You don't have those seasonal up and downs like you might have for uh, 
you know, big bang software releases back in the day, like a major Windows version every three years. Um, on the other hand, you know, I, I, I'm not sure they want to be a bank, right? I mean, um, when Apple has uh, a trade-up program on the iPhone or whatever they call that, it's a good deal for consumers because it doesn't cost them any more than they were already paying uh, to their wireless carrier, except what they're getting is an unlocked device. They're getting a guarantee every year that they get a new device and so on. You know, we all understand the, the various benefits and so forth. Yeah. But the reason that makes sense for Apple is that the iPhone is their number one business. Yeah. The iPhone is almost their only business. Also, I mean, it's also easier for someone to bring an iPhone to a store, you know? Okay. Yeah, that's back. true. But I mean, yeah. but but from Apple's perspective, when the iPhone is sixty five percent of your revenues, and the other thirty five percent, thirty percent of it is things that are just like an iPhone but a different size, you know, whatever. Sure. Um, you know, it, it kind of makes sense to 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 grease the wheels a little bit there and make that work. I mean, for Microsoft, you know, the Xbox One is never going to be a major business compared to the overall business at Microsoft. So, does it make sense for them to offer a consumer subscription service where I don't know what the benefit would be. I mean, other than giving you, um, it would basically be a more like a way to afford something you can't afford. It's like anything so. you, you. Yeah, it's like any other. It's like a cell know. phone plan. I, I don't know I, how. I, yeah, I, it's it, it, but you can make these arguments as a consumer that like a cell phone is necessary. Yeah. So you kind of enter into this deal, and plus, I I think we're all a little subscription doubt. You know, if you were to add up all of the subscriptions you have right oh, now, it's insane. It, it might be yeah. shocking. Yeah. You know? it, it, so. I don't, a video game, it's like, like I don't know. I I but don't I don't know. They'll have a lower cost console, so yeah, you know, three hundred bucks. If, if you, you want you the four K version, you, do we yeah, do we it, know what the price on the on the the Sony four K one is going to be? No. no they, by the way, Sony has never actually officially even announced it. They'll probably do it. It's next E3. week. Yeah, next. Week. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Next week's going to be big. Yeah, uh, very interesting. Uh, I want to continue yeah. this discussion because it's mm -hmm. it's fascinating to me that this is the first time that, uh, that something like this is happening, where you're going to have yeah, a, mid a refresh a midstream upgrade. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Of, there there of, have been little things like people point to remember, uh, and I'm not going to even get the name of these things right, but when the Sony uh, Sony when the Sega Genesis was a thing, Sony uh, Sega. I don't. I can't get Sega in my Sega Genesis was like a 16 bit. By the way, it's console, in two weeks. Right? It's in two weeks. Two weeks, okay. Yeah, um, yeah that's right, because it's after I get back. Um, the Sega Genesis was very successful for them. That that generation, they actually won that generation of consoles, right? Um, and the, to follow it up, they came out with these weird things. There was like a Mega it was Drive modular, thing. Or, yeah, 32X. Yeah. 32x there you go yeah and i i believe what that was off the top of my head was like a disc based thing you could plug into the top of it yep. so you could use disc based games yep and i think the point of it was to just enable probably more like more it was bigger like the, the, the disc could hold more content than a cartridge or whatever they were using at the time um and that kind of failed spectacularly um but i think I think like a better example of this kind of thing in a way was the Xbox 360 because uh, even though the the console hardware changed a little bit even before they went away from the white console so that the initial, I'm going to get this wrong, the initial version had like kind of a, a proprietary plug on the back for video out and Microsoft included in the box probably like a red, green, blue or an RCA style yeah. connector for with, that With thing. the 360. With the 360, you could get a VGA connector if you had like a you know yeah. computer monitor. Um, and I, I believe the I believe the component the com it came with composite and then the component was an extra it was an add-on. That's that right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what wasn't an option on day one was HDMI, and so later on they added HDMI right to the console. And they also added the ability to the, when the console originally shipped it was 720p only. Yeah. And they, they midstream on the first gen console added 1080i. And I think you needed to have the composite cable set and possibly VGA. I don't remember. I don't remember exactly, but you, you probably had to have composite. You need the component. The component. The component. Component. Yeah. Sorry, I was confused. Those two. Um, and then eventually, of course, HDMI uh, worked as well, of course. Um, but I guess anyway. that is equivalent. I mean, I guess that would be the same because when I, I had the I had the original. Well, except I mean, that they didn't actually update the heart, like the core hardware, the right? core hardware. They, yeah, but but it was capable of doing it. Like 
people didn't expect that. They thought they were getting a 720p console. The PS3 came out with t- uh, 1080p ostensibly. Uh, and then they, you know, they, they, you know, they added that capability. I think they were basically just upsizing it. So, you know, it went out native at 1080. Yeah, the, it, it, it was, um, it was component. The Xbox 360 had core was component. It would do up to 720. And there was like a little switch on it, right? Wasn't there like a little switch yeah, on it? Probably. So you would tell it to go to composite mode or component mode, something like that. It was really weird and wacky how they did it. But yeah, I guess so. I mean, that's the closest that I could see it being equated to you know as far as an upgrade goes but they did make it they did change the body of it no later well, on yeah no they did yeah. that as well but i mean but uh, obviously the the big change here and this would be true of sony as well is that they are dramatically improving the internal hardware meaning the processor the ram the st- you know it, it's the the actual the architecture is not changing but you know it's like going from a processor gen to the next processor gen or whatever i'm not sure exactly how they're doing it but um i don't think that this has ever been done exactly I'm trying to no, like the Mega Drive stuff, the the Genesis stuff was. You know why they did that? Do you know why they added that stuff to compete with uh, the Jaguar? No, to compete with the the, the <laughs> SNES because they were getting their asses handed to them by Nintendo. So they needed something. So they they to extend well, uh, to the bridge the yeah. So in other words, they weren't ready with 32 bit console, which was the Saturn. Yeah, which Sega failed Saturn, terribly. Yeah. I Sega think CD. what so how that yeah they a Sega CD no Sega CD. Well, that's what I mean. Like, so whatever, I th- like there was a 32X, which supposedly brought 32-bit capabilities to the console. I think that was kind of the deal. Like, but there was a disc component to it. Like, I think that was part of the deal. Yeah. Anyway, it didn't work. Um, that didn't go very well. No, so. Did not. And they never really recovered. No, they never actually Saturn really recovered. Saturn and then Dreamcast, and then they're out. I'll tell you, that Dreamcast, though, I, was, I loved it. Such yeah. a good console. Unfortunately, it came at the time that pirating became very easy. And yep, yep. you could literally just rip, you know, just go on uh, a website, download, and mm-hmm. put it on a on a on a CDR, and just pop it right in. It was, it, it was insane. I don't know one Those person. Were the days. I know ev- everybody that I know had one. Not one person would buy a game. I don't know anybody no. that had legitimate games other than you know, <laughs> cruising right. the world or whatever that game was that it came with. Uh, we have I a lot did. to talk about, Paul. <laughs> but, <laughs> we yeah. have a lot to talk about. But let's take a little break and talk about our sponsor, and that's Harry's. Guys, they have a phenomenal deal for Father's Day, and this is a great time to talk about this because Paul got one, and I got one too. I have this beautiful set from Harry's that arrived last week. I showed it last week, but I was, I'm, I'm going to show it again. We're going to pretend I never showed this. Uh, this is the Father's Day set that they have, and uh, look at that. Look how nice this is. Isn't that nice? Give you a nice little card inside. It says, uh, you know, to the person that it's coming from, Harry's Limited Edition Father's Day kit. Give you instructions. You got the shaving cream. You got the razor. You got the blades. You got the holder. You're getting the whole package here. This is unbelievable. Um, and guess what? It's time for Father's Day. It comes with uh, the whole. So the kit, this is what the kit has. I'm going to talk about the deal that they're offering. Uh, so it has the Father's Day set includes the matte black razor handle, the chrome Razor stand, moisturizing foam gel, three of three handcrafted blade cartridges, a travel co- cover, all for $40. Uh, this is a great, great gift. Plus, it comes with a sleek, giftable box, and you could add a, um, and you can add, it has the option of adding a custom engravement and a personal card. So, uh, very, very cool. Guys, if you go to harrys.com and you use the code what the tech, you get $5 off the limited edition Father's Day set. I got this one. I'm going to give this to somebody in my family. But I, I showed Jess this yesterday. And Jess like, oh, my God. You know what? We should get this for, like, all the fathers. Like, it's a great gift. We ordered, like, four of them already. Because I have four fathers. I have four dads. <laughs> it's only for my family. No, we ordered it for, like, the grandfathers and the dads, you know. So we're going to be giving everybody these Harry's razors now. Uh, because it's such a, you know, everybody shaves. And it looks really, really expensive. It, the quality is expensive, you know, the quality wise, it's great, but the cost is a fraction of what you're going to be paying. Paul, you got yours, right? Yep. Have you used it yet? I haven't even opened it yet. Oh, you haven't I, even I opened was, it? Yeah. I yeah, didn't think awesome. we could talk about it yet. No, seriously. <laughs> seriously. Yeah. It, it's, um, it's a great, it's a great piece of, uh, shaving, I guess, tool. 
because it's really well done. Uh, it's It feels way better than what you're going to buy in the store, and you're going to pay much less. Harrys.com. Use the... Enter the code what the tech I check out and get five dollars off this limited edition Father's Day set. I want to thank Harris for supporting the show. Guys, if you if you're looking for a great a great gift for your dad, this is it. Really, really cool. Harry's.com, everybody. Uh Paul. Yes, sir. What do you want to touch on next? Let's see. The Xbox stuff uh, is big. Oh, you know what? Uh I have a couple questions for you. I saw you got that Chromebook 14. Yeah. Uh I know how you how you felt about Chromebooks. And mm -hmm. this, I believe this Asus was the one that was better specs, right? And that was the one that I had ordered that I canceled. I got the, it's an Acer. Yeah, the Acer, Acer. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I had ordered this and I canceled it because Amazon could not tell me when yeah. it was going to ship out. It was actually annoying me. Yep, that was the same with when, when I ordered it. And it actually arrived sooner than I thought it was going to. I spent a lot of time, you know, uh, when Google I.O. happened, um, I looked at the first three devices that are going to get the Android app support. And I thought, of course, you know, I should get one of those. But the one I really wanted was the Pixel, right? But the Pixel, which supposedly starts at $999, really starts at $1,300 because the $999 model is out of stock yeah. and is never that, coming that's, back. That's ridiculous. And I'm not spending that much money on a Chromebook. Sorry, I don't care how nice yeah. it is. 500 bucks, I probably would have done it. But... Um, and I, the other two just don't interest me. And so I thought, well, you know, okay. So there's got to be something that's kind of along the lines of the quality level of a Pixel, but is much less expensive. And there were two, uh, the one I got, and then also the uh, the Dell. Uh, but the Dell is actually significantly more expensive. Uh, and I like the fact that this thing had a 14-inch screen. Yeah, I really do prefer a bigger screen. I think this is probably... This is at least. This is going to sound crazy. No one's going to believe this when I say this. This is at least the fifth or sixth Chromebook I've owned. I'm so sorry. And I, yeah, and I probably have at least four of them in the house right now. Um, I got the original CR48 from Google. I have two Toshibas. I had the little HP 11, which my daughter actually uses for school. I have an Acer 15-inch model uh, from last year, and I have this one which is the 14, and how many is that? <laughs> so whatever that is. Yeah. I've had a lot of them, and a lot of them are still here. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't use them. I, 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 I keep these things, or I, I keep one on hand like and kind ends. of ready to... <laughs> no, no. No, I mean, I, I need to get rid of the old ones. But yeah. I mean, the, the reason I have one is the reason I have anything, like a Mac or whatever is, you know, an Apple Watch. I need to have this stuff on hand because I'm going to wake up tomorrow and Microsoft's going to announce something or there's some, you know, Google's going to announce something and I'm going to want to try it out and, you know, yeah. I need something. So... Um, I guess the only issue with this from a short-term perspective is going to be that it's not going to be one of the first devices to get the Android app support. And I am very interested in that oh, for it's obvious not. reasons. It's so. not going to be one of those. No, because only three are getting it right away. Okay. Um, so one of them is that flip device. One's the Pixel, obviously. The, only the new Pixel. Um, and the other one I don't remember. But neither none of them are... I don't know. Are they? Are they? Is there any of them that are priced in this three hundred dollar range? Oh yeah, yeah. The other two are. Two oh, of are. them are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, see, I'm very interested in what's going to happen once the Android support is on the Chromebooks because yep. it's yep. a whole different ball so, game there. It, it's going to be very, very different because um, right. setting everything is in the cloud. Really, pretty much. How how is it using the functionality of this thing? So, um, you know, it's, it's a Chromebook, right? So <laughs> I didn't write too much about the chromeness of the machine. I did a little quick look. I'm not going to, I'm not going to review it. I'm not going to do battery life testing or anything like yeah. that. I, but I, I looked at it from the perspective of, you know, I review PC hardware all the time. This is hardware. It's like a PC. How does it compare? And there, there are pluses and minuses. The screen's good. It's not great. The keyboard's good. It's not great. The trackpad is pretty great. Um, the performance is great. Um, you know, and that's, that's about it, I guess. It's not too much to say. Um, I think that people who are um, anti-Chromebook or just kind of negative toward the Chromebook are often working on out-of-date information. You know, they okay. seem to think you have to have an internet connection to use it and, you know, <laughs> on and on and on. But um, it's okay. I, 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 I see the kind of pluses and minuses of it. You could almost construct every sentence about this thing by saying this is good but and then you know the kind of end it so for example 
Um, one thing, I, and I do this on Windows, uh, Chrome allows you to run web apps as like windowed apps. So in the Chrome web browser on a Windows PC, you can go to the Chrome menu and, you know, more tools or whatever, and you make these desktop shortcuts. And they, they sit in, in the taskbar in Windows, and they look like apps. And they run like apps. They run in little Windows. It doesn't look like a web browser. Um, you can do that in Chrome OS as well, right? So uh, when, the, when Chrome OS first came out or when the Chromebooks first appeared, I don't know that that was possible or if it was, it wasn't possible for every app. I don't remember exactly. But, you know, back in the day, back when it started four years ago-ish, five years ago, whenever it was, you were basically, it was just a, a web browser window running full screen. So you could have multiple tabs, you could have multiple windows, but they were just web browser windows. And so it wasn't particularly sophisticated. Today, any of these apps, if you're running Google Docs, if you're running uh, Inbox or Gmail or Google Calendar or Pocket or Google Play Music or, you know, I have a Markdown editor that I use or the, the, the web version of Skype works, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, you can run them if you, you can... You have all your icons in the in the what is basically the taskbar. You can click on it; it opens up. It can open up in a web browser window. You can do that, but it can actually just open up as a window, and then it seems more like a, a sophisticated desktop operating system when you do it yeah. that way. It's so that's good. Yeah. But <laughs> okay. the thing that's weird about it is those windows. Um, you can run them full screen. You can run them as a floating window. You can resize them in in different ways, but they they don't. Uh, when you move them around, they kind of clip to the edges of the screen a little bit. And if you open multiple windows, they'll actually resize without you meaning to resize them sometimes. And I find that a little off-putting. So the window management functionality, I guess, is the way I would describe it, of Chrome OS is not as sophisticated as Windows was 25, 30 years ago. I mean, it's, it's, it's really kind of basic. Um, and there's little things like, you know, Chrome OS... Uh, you have to log in with your password every time you open the lid, right? You have to type in your full Google password, right? You need a Google account to use them. Um, on Windows, I can sign in with a fingerprint reader. I can sign in with a PIN. I can sign in with a picture passcode. If I have a real sense camera, I can yeah. sign in with my face. Like having to actually type out a password every time you use it is really tedious. Yeah, but I think that's, that's most people, though. I mean, most people are typing it out, right? I hope not. That's a terrible way to sign into a computer. It's I, I'm so used to doing it. That's more how easily. I do it. That's how I do it. Right. I, well, of course, you use a Mac. You're you're stuck as well. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm not. Stuck. It's no. It's not sophisticated. I mean, it's just uh, Chrome OS like Mac OS does not offer a more sophisticated way to sign in, and that's crazy to me. It's 2016. Like you sign into a phone with your fingerprint. Why? Well, that's a rumor right now, right? With the next generation MacBooks, uh, they the should MacBook have done Pro. it five years ago. Yeah, because how how hard could it be to put it on the trackpad? It has to be easier to do it on a Mac than it is on a phone. Yeah. Why? I mean, I don't. It makes no sense. Anyway, so uh, I would say Chrome OS is, uh, you know, it's it's not as sophisticated as Windows. Obviously, it's not as powerful as Windows. Obviously. It's not as complex as Windows, and th there is some benefit to that. Um, Can I don't you have not problems. have a username and password? Can you just flip the lid? I don't and believe so. I, I oh, think you, you have oh, it's, it's, you need to have a password. I think so. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's weird if so. that's the case. Well, it's... Well, like, I don't have a password have to... on, like, I have a machine right here, right? Like, this machine here, yeah. I don't have a password on there. It just sits here. I don't take it anymore. I know, but... The... <laughs> This thing only runs web apps, and all of those web apps—not all of them, but most of them—require you to sign in. Yeah. Okay. Um, all of to get any of them, you have to go to the store, which does require you to sign in. Like you have to sign in. So you sign in when you make when you. It's a modern computer. It's 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 web connected. I'm, this is the point. I'm really fascinated with the changes we're going to see when Android apps are running on this thing, because at that point. I mean, if I could, if, I mean, even, even yeah. that's like the dumbest things, right? Like, let's say it's uh, like, I like tower defense games on my phone. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, I'm like, I was on the, I was on the plane. I was playing on this. I'm like, I wish I could play this on like my laptop. On a bigger screen. On yeah. a bigger screen. Like it, it was all, it's for Android and I don't have a, I don't, I have an Android tablet, but I didn't take it with me, but I couldn't play this anywhere else. So yep. the fact that I could just do it on my computer because all these apps are readily available. It would yes. really change the way that you think when you when you compute. So if you're in the Android ecosystem, um, would I be more like 
Would you be more inclined to say, skirt, I don't need a PC. I could just buy a, yeah. a Chromebook. Oh, I, yes, <laughs> because yeah. right, if you were to evaluate a Chromebook today for personal use, um, you're, most people are coming at that from some position of expertise. They, they have been using Windows PCs for X number of years or Macs, and they're used to it. And so from sort of a usage perspective, the basic usage of this thing is familiar enough. Like anyone could get around it. There's a taskbar. They don't have a start menu anymore. They used to, but now they have a, a floating window in the middle instead. That has, it's like a launcher or whatever. Um, you could use it. When you start investigating the apps on Chrome OS, depending on where you were in the transition to the cloud, you're either going to be very comfortable with it or you're going to be very off-put by it. You know, that... If you're used to things like iTunes and um, you know Photoshop and Microsoft Word and Microsoft Outlook or whatever, these solutions do not exist per se on a Chromebook because you're not installing apps directly on the Chromebook yeah. typically. Although, by the way, you, you kind of can do that in some cases. Um, it's not. It, it, it was designed from the get-go to be a front-end for web apps only. So um, you don't have to put anything on the disk. Um, although, if you want to run things offline, uh, you would have to do that, obviously. Um, so, uh, if you're used to that kind of Microsoft, Apple stuff, it's not all there. And, and the web versions that are aren't as full-featured, and those are not available offline. It's a terrible design decision on Microsoft's part. But it's a little off, you know? So, when you add Android to the mix, not only do you get the benefit of like a, a billion more apps or whatever it is now, um, you get some pretty high quality apps, including, by the way, Microsoft Office, right? Um, locally installable, full featured mobile app versions of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, Outlook, um, you know, and many others. And, you know, yeah, no, it's not Office 2016 for, the, for Windows. It's not that powerful, but it's better than Office on the web, right? And they can work offline. Um, it's, it's interesting. And it's not just Microsoft, obviously. I mean, I'm coming from it from a slightly Microsoft, um, you know, bias perspective or whatever. But it's whatever is great about Android, it's there. You know, Android tablet apps don't uh, tend to be as good as, say, like iPad apps. Um, it seems like the Android stuff is generally better on phone. But the available um, catalog of Android apps that work as a tablet app and thus would work full screen or in a normal. Yeah, it's uh, going to need work, there. but well, it's, it's still better than Chrome OS apps. Yeah, you know? oh, hundred uh, percent. It's got. Yeah. I'm curious to see where the next couple months takes us with this. Um, obviously, some mm -hmm. applications are not going to convert over as well as others. But yeah. essentially, if it's on the tablet, then it should work fine on the the, the laptop, mm -hmm. right? Well, by the way, even the when even the the phone apps would work too. They'll, they'll run in little phone size windows. Okay. You know, so you can, yeah. I was, that alone is kind of neat. I remember thinking back when Windows 8 first shipped, um, you know, why uh, why wouldn't you allow Windows phone apps to run on this thing? They could run in these little windows, you know? I mean, you, it would be kind of cool. You know what's amazing? And I was, I was talking to someone about this. I'm like, I have this, I could do, essentially, I could do photo editing on this thing, right? I could do high quality HD video calling and all this stuff. But yep. God forbid I want to do like a Google Hangout on my Mac. My I CPU know. is at like 100%. This thing is screaming. I mean, well, you it, know what? That, I, I think that's uh, basically boils down to expertise um, on Google's part. You know, like they are really good with these mobile apps. They're not necessarily as good or as inclined, you know. Um, oh, it's absolutely, it, it's, it's terrible. But like, it's interesting, right? Like that I could play a full like you know this this really high quality game on the stupid phone with no fan mm. on it by the way but i can't make a video yep. call without yep. my cpu shooting up in chrome yep. you know it, yep. it's 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 interesting to think about i'm excited for it uh when these i want to does anybody know i'm, I'm asking a chairman now does anybody know which model is going to support the um oh yeah, yeah, yeah the chrome stuff first uh the the android stuff first because you said it's, it's the three. Pixel, so one of, the, it's the new device. Pixel. Yeah. It's the Chromebook Flip, which I think is Asus, and the Dell Chromebook 13. Oh, it's Dell Chromebook 13. Let's see how much this thing is going to be. They're actually pretty expensive. Um, 
It's a but business, over time, business class I mean, laptop with touchscreen. Okay, so this one's a touchscreen. Four twenty nine. This this is just in June. Like um, the initial release, it will support these three. People will figure out how to get the stuff on every Chromebook. But then later in twenty sixteen, it's basically every Chromebook ever made. It's all going to support uh, it. Yeah. Oh yeah, not every single one, but you know, most of them. Anything that was, I guess, in, within modern range, right? Not, not the initial uh, first gen version of this, but anything the last mm -hmm. year should support it. Yeah, I'm very yeah. interested to see how this plays out. Yep, very, okay. very curious. I'm curious to see not so much Microsoft, but I'm curious to see what Apple does with this. Because they're another uh, like humongous, humongous, humongous yeah. library. I mean, right? That <clears throat> can be very beneficial because that Mac App Store is absolute, absolute trash. There's nothing in there. Really, it, There's nothing. It is pretty bad, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, when when the number one, let me yep. go in there and see what's going on. App Store, let's see. Top download, the top charts. The only reason a Mac user ever goes to the store is because that's how you update the OS. That's how you update the OS, yeah. <laughs> it's just such a terrible decision. I can't even get it to load. Is that funny? Microsoft did that, remember, in Windows 8, and then they decided to stop doing that. Yeah. I must <laughs> sign in to view my purchases. I thought I was signed in. So here, top paid, okay? GarageBand, mm -hmm. two, BitMed, Bit, BitMedic Antivirus, okay. three, Magnet, so I think it's an app that snaps, Disk Cleaner for you, Call of Duty 4, Final Cut Pro, Sims 2, Logic X, Duplicator. Call of Duty 4? Yeah. So a Call of Duty game that came out like eight years ago. Yeah, Call of Duty 4 <laughs> Modern Warfare. Yeah. Yeah, but it's nine bucks. Okay, but... It, it literally is nine years old. Yeah. Uh, photo du duplicator, photo fixer. Yeah. Okay. They, they, uh, it makes the Windows Store look good by comparison. Yeah, it kind of does. You top know, really three. Does. Top three. Kindle. Uh, actually, it's El Capitan Kindle Xcode, Microsoft yep. Remote Desktop. Isn't sure. that funny? <laughs> actually, when did they add that? Is that new? Remote Desktop. Yeah, for no, for the Mac. Out. Yeah, that's been out. Uh, Unarchiver, so I guess it's a zip. Slacker, I don't know what that is. App Slacker. Face, App Face for Facebook. Now this is where we get into like the little, little clones. OneDrive, two stars for OneDrive on the Mac, by the way. Yeah. App for Instagram, Ever Evernote. Like it's it's, it looks like a really crappy app store. That's mm -hmm. amazing. App Face for Facebook. Yeah, it's terrible. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The reason why nobody's using that store. Um, it's terrible. Well, it but, is but, terrible. Listen, we, we, I know, look, I, I, I know this from the Microsoft side. It's hard starting a new store. I mean, you know, the Amazon store isn't particularly good either, right? Um, it's, it's hard. You know, it, it's hard to get developers yeah. to embrace these things. It's hard to get users to change the way they do things. Well, you know what's um, interesting? Like, why, why isn't Skype in that app store? You know what I mean? Like Skype should be in there, but they don't. I don't think they want Skype in there. So uh, the reason an, a developer might not put their app in the store is that they there are requirements. I guess so. for support and multi PC use, etc. So you know, for example, like uh, Photoshop, eh, like you know, they sell that thing for a lot of money. They don't want that thing in there. They don't want you to be able to use it on like ten different Macs or something. Like they, you know, they. Yeah, I guess so. not, yeah. there are certain things that just are not going to work yeah. you know, that way. So Very um, interesting. Guys, if you're watching live, stay tuned. We're going to do our post show. It's called What the Talk. If you listen to the podcast, go to patreon.com slash what the tech and you could uh, fund us there. Anything you want to fund us and you get mm -hmm. access to all these bonus shows that we've been doing. Uh, it's all over there. Paul, all things Paul, go to therot.com. Oh, my God. I forgot to tell you guys. This was the biggest part of this. The podcast awards were nominated. Paul and I are nominated, What the Tech is nominated, and Matt Men is nominated. If you go to podcastawards.com, you could go and vote every single day. Vote for us, uh, Best Tech Podcast, and I believe Best Sports Podcast for Matt Men. Uh, podcastawards.com. I kind of want to win this thing. Jeez. Or you go to gfq.co slash awards. gfq.co slash awards. You could go there and uh, vote via that, that link as well. Uh, podcast awards uh, go to therot.com all things Paul Therot go uh, read what Paul's saying and watching uh, and watch him do what he does uh, you have a lot going on on that website 
Yep. Brad's on there. I'm on mm-hmm. there now with What the Tech. You post it there every day. <laughs> yep. There's so many faces on Therat.com. It's not just the beautiful face of Paul Therat. Many, many <laughs> faces on there. Uh, anything coming up? Any new books? Any Anything that... Um... No, nothing new like that. I mean, I'm going to update the book for the anniversary update. Yeah. Uh, June and July. But no, nothing, nothing major that's new. All right. And then we're going to talk about uh, hanging out on Thursday. So that's what we're going to do on the post show. All right, guys, okay. you can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. And that's it for this week. Take care.